Welcome to Krug's Review follow-up episode. Last month we looked at uh, Australian candy and uh, one of the things that I really didn't like was Vegemite. This little guy. And I had a user say to me that I put way too much on my toast. So I thought I'd give Vegemite another chance. He also mentioned that I should butter the toast first, which is what I've done, and to use just a pea-sized amount of Vegemite. Now, it's going to ha be hard to spread a pea-sized amount across this bread, but I'm going to give it a good old try. So let's try it. And we're just going to use a little bit of the be Vegemite. He said the size of a pea. Okay. And there we go, just that little bit. I'm gonna try to spread across this bread and then we'll see what that tastes like. Just real light. Ah. Okay, this is much, much lighter than what I did last month. So we'll give it a look here. Let me show you on the candy cam here. That's much lighter than last month. And I'm gonna just take a bite down here where it's not so concentrated just to see what I think. Now this is buttered and toasted with Vegemite. I almost passed out last month. Let's see how this is. Well, it's definitely not as bad, but it still has that bitter weird taste and I'm sure those people in, I guess, uh, Australia and maybe the UK that have the, that other kind that's similar to this, they're used to that taste. I'm not. To me, it tastes like medicine, truly like medicine. It has a very bitter, almost halfway between strong licorice and molasses. It's sort of a, a mix between the two. I think this is the way it's supposed to be eaten by a newbie like me. I still don't like it. It's not horrible, horrible. It's a taste I'd really have to get used to. I believe this was developed in the early 1900s, a little over 100 years ago by someone. They use these spices and things to make this. I don't quite understand it, but y'all that enjoy that, more to you, more power to you. Okay. We are in the middle of an ice storm right now here in northern Texas, and um, it is a mess outside. Everything has been just pretty much been put at a standstill for the last two or three days, and it's supposed to get even worse tonight. So we'll see. I'll, t I'll show you a couple pictures in a little bit of what it's looking like outside, and we'll take the Russells. I took the dogs for a walk about two hours ago, and I almost fell once, but they were slipping and sliding all over the place. It was really pretty funny. Now, here's something that I wanted to review the last time and forgot about it. It's something I've heard of all my life. It was like one of the first, if not the first soda pop, soda drink that was developed in 1884. It's called Moxie. I didn't look it up to see what it is because I wanna be surprised. I have no idea, candy cam. I have no idea if this is like Coke, like Dr. Pepper, uh, some type of different kind of cola. We're gonna see here in just a second. But this is Moxie, and it says on it, original elixir. So hopefully it's not like Vegemite. And you know, I haven't opened up a bottle with a bottle opener in probably 15 years. And luckily, I had a bottle opener upstairs in our game room bar. And <laughs> so this is gonna be a, a new event for me, opening up something like this. Hopefully I still can. Okay, here we go. Ah, and it's opened. Bottle top, Moxie. This is gonna be interesting because I have no idea what this is. I don't know if it's a Coke thing, like I said, or Dr. Pepper or birch beer. I'm from Pennsylvania, we got birch beer up there. Or root beer. I have no idea what this is gonna taste like, but I knew it was dark colored. So here we go, Moxie Elixir. That's actually pretty good. You know, it's almost 
it's almost a, it's about, it's about two thirds root beer and about a third cola. It's somewhere in between. Very interesting taste. Maybe even a little bit like birch beer. It's different. It's different. If you ever get a chance and find this in a supermarket, give it a try. It's very interesting. This, this might be a good mixer with some alcoholic drinks, you know, with some adult beverages. It might be a good mixer. It's almost floral. Like I said, the root beer makes it sort of organic. It's very different. It's quite sweet too. So I imagine these um, specialty bottles, because these wind up being like two bucks a bottle for something like this. They probably have the original amount of cane sugar in them, with it, but most drinks today do not. They've sort of weaned us down with the sugar a bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do an up close and personal look at my two Jack Russell Terriers. We're gonna go over onto the sofa and take a look at them. AC Tesla, named for Nikola Tesla, Nikolai Tesla, and AC, the power that he promoted, and then DC Edison, named for Thomas Alva Edison, and named after the DC current or direct current that he promoted. So those are my two Jack Russells. I was an um, audio engineer um, all my life, recording engineer, and so I was into electronics and things, and so uh, Tesla and Edison were always sort of my heroes, even though Tesla was really the hero. Edison just took inventions and knew how to market them, and uh, Tesla was the genius behind that. <laughs> Edison here at my knees. But anyway, let's take a look at these two, and then we'll show you some outside crazy ice storm footage from northern Texas in early February 2023. Well, we're back. Uh, as you can see, we're not in the living room. We're up in the media room, which we've sort of turned into a library now. Uh, but anyway, it's about a week and a half later. As you can see, I'm all trimmed up, got a haircut, and I'm using my chocolate peanut butter pie Oreos to lure the <laughs> the uh, Jack Russells in with me down here, and I hope he gets up and sits up here with me. This is DC Edison, and this is AC Tesla. We had two, at one time we had two Jack Russells. We had uh, Hudson, and his full name was Hudson Bay Explorer. Uh, he was born in 2002, December, and we got him in January of 2003. And then right as we were moving to Texas about 18 years ago, we got Murphy. And Murphy, was his full name was Murphy's Little Boy. His mother was Murphy, and so we named him Murphy's Little Boy. Well, Murphy passed away in March of 2019, and I decided I wanted to get at least another dog or two, and crazy me, I decided on two Jack Russell Terrier puppies. Now keep in mind when you're house breaking a dog, you really need an older dog to, to show the younger dog when to go outside and do his business. If you have two little pups the same age, and these two are half brothers, actually I'll tell you in a little bit about them, they're closer than half brothers, but they're two days apart, they have the same daddy. Well, can you imagine, while, one, while I'm trying to clean up one's pee over in one corner of the room, the other one's peeing on the other side of the room. This went on for almost a half year till they sort of got the knack of it. Back when we had Hudson and, and Murphy, Hudson was older. He was, I guess, two years older than, than Murphy. And he would go outside to his business and, and Murphy would see that and know what to do. And within no time, Murphy was house trained in two months. It was wonderful. And we had just bought a new house, so that was even great, greater yet. I've got this... Oreo peanut butter, chocolate peanut butter pie cookie, and they're going crazy about it. Anyway, this is, again, D.C. Edison, and he's a sweetheart. And this is A.C. Tesla. Of course, they're named after, like I said earlier, Nikolai Tesla and then Thomas Alva Edison. One more for you, and one more for you, and the rest for Barry. Okay, so to continue with my story, right after Murphy passed away, I went online and found a, a Jack Russell breeder near us. Oh, about 25 miles south of here is a little town called Waxahachie, Texas. 
And there was a breeder there, and his dogs were called Waxahachie, or his company, or breeding farm, was called Waxahachie Jacks. So I contacted him, and he said he had to. He warned me, though. <laughs> he warned me. He said, these are more like the hunting Jack Russells. They're more hyper. They're like the ones that like to run around and chase the foxes. And now Murphy and Hudson were the other kind. They were a little more docile, and they were just, they were more settled. These two, every little thing, they jump like a squirrel. I mean, they're, cra they're crazy. Sometimes that's why I call them the power Russells, because they've got more power than I think a, uh, a power plant has. But anyway, uh, in looking at their, their pedigree or their genealogy, not only do they have the same father, but their mothers are very closely related. And the more crazy thing is, there's a lot of, I don't say a lot of, but a half dozen or so of their great, 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 and great, great, great grandparents that are related to the father from the mother's side. So they are very closely related. Uh, Tesla was born on January 7th, 2019. And Edison was born January 9th, 2019. So as you can see, they're not just half-brothers, they're basically siblings. In fact, they're almost closer than that because there's a little bit of inbreeding from the mother to the father. And all the mothers, the mothers are, are related. They all have the same ancestors. All If you go back three or four generations, they're all the same dogs. So they're very close. Um, they fight from time to time. And Edison here is the definite alpha. He takes control. He's the, he's the big boy. He's the... Uh, He's the big brother, even though he's two days younger. The only funny thing is this boy, the big boy, the big alpha, thunderstorm comes along with rain, and then thunder, he is as scared. He tries to crawl into the wall. He's so scared. But it doesn't face Tesla. He'll go out in the rain and do his business. But uh, Edison, boy, he's just, when it comes to that, he's just a little chicken. So anyway, that's my dogs. And uh, I love them. They're getting a little heavy, particularly... Particularly Tesla, he's, uh, that may be partly in his genes too. He seems to be really heavy. And he has had uh, bladder surgery because of uh, bladder stones. And he's been in the emergency room twice before that um, to have them do a catheter up his urethra uh, to help alleviate that. At one point, I thought he was going to die. He couldn't go. He was getting a fever, throwing up. And they told me if I had waited another day, his kidneys probably would have shut down and that would have been it. So we got him there in time. But he's okay right now. And we're just doing fine. So thanks for being with us today. Our next review is going to be Sweet Mexican Candy, which I mentioned earlier in the, in the video today. And then we'll be seeing, after that, we've got some other really interesting ideas coming up. Uh, more organ music, probably in the next week or two. So if you like, uh, subscribe and like. And uh, we'll hope to see you soon. Goodbye from D.C. Edison, A.C. Tesla, from Texas, USA.